Hi, everybody. Welcome to today's webinar. I'm going to give everyone a couple more minutes, or not a couple more minutes, one more minute um, to join us before we begin. So just hang tight for one more second here. All right, so a few people are still joining, but that's all right. I'm going to get started. Um, thank you for joining us today. Happy, happy Tuesday, um, and welcome to our webinar. So my name is Jenna. I work for Emerging Destinations. Uh, we represent cool companies in cool places. Today, I am being joined by Henry from Terra Nova. So he's going to uh, walk us through everything that we need to know about Costa Rica's mid-Pacific region. So what to do, where to stay, and I'm very excited to show you some of these, or for Henry, sorry, to show you some of these places that you can stay in the mid-Pacific. I know right about now I would love to be transported to some of those properties, so I'm excited for you to see some that. Um, before we get too far into that though, I'm going to quickly introduce our portfolio to you. So, of course, today we are being joined by Terra Nova in the top left corner there, there in Costa Rica. Um, since we're in Latin America, South America, I'll just introduce that portfolio to you very quickly. We have Guyana, who we represent the Guyana Tourism Authority there. Um, we also have Hotel Las Torres, Fantastico Sur, and Cruz Andino, who are all in Patagonia in uh, Chile and Argentina. Uh, we have Jungle Experiences in the Amazon doing river cruising and Grand Hotels Lux as well, and they're in Argentina and Uruguay. So um, again, if you have any questions about any of those other clients, um, we do have an African portfolio and a small ship polar cruise portfolio as well. So if you're interested in any of those, if you'd like to order brochures or just receive some digital links, any other information, please feel free to uh, email me. My email is at the bottom of the screen there, just jen at emergingdestinations.com. If you have any questions please do not hesitate to reach out to me i'd be more than happy to help you with um, any questions about those a uh, few housekeeping items to go over before we begin um, as always this webinar will be recorded so if you do need to step away for any reason take a call um, don't worry we will be sending out the recording to everyone later this week so i will get that out to you asap if there's anything that you miss um, and as always as well, we would love for you to participate. So ask any questions. Uh, you can do this while Henry is presenting or you can um, type them through at the end. We will get Henry to answer as many of these as possible. So make sure to pop those over to us using the GoToWebinar control panel. Um, if there are some questions that we don't get to, Henry will answer them and I will send them to you um, via our webinar follow-up. So don't worry if we don't get to them, you'll still get those questions answered. But on that note, um, I'm going to hand things over to Henry, who's joining us from hot, humid San Jose today. So Henry, over to you to talk about Costa Rica's mid-Pacific. Thank you so much, Jenna. Great to be with you here again. And hello, everybody. Saludos desde Costa Rica, Pura Vida. Hope you're doing fine. Greetings from this lovely part of the world. Thank you so much for joining us today. Um, it's a pleasure to be here again, and thank you for all of you who have been following this series of webinars. I'm sure that you guys have a fantastic um, understanding of what the destination is right now. Um, and well, we're ready to um, learn a little bit more of um, Costa Rica. We're going to focus today on the mid-Pacific side of the country. Um, this area offers two amazing locations. One of them, you could say that it's a little bit old. You, we can use that term, which is Manuel Antonio, but I'm going to give you the um, intel on all the new things that Manuel Antonio have to offer. And the other um, location, it's um, Dominical Uvita. This part of the country is southern, uh, further south, and um, over there you will find uh, an amazing national park, the Ballena National Park, and also a lot of amazing private villas and, and private houses that we can also uh, book for you. But let's uh, 
talk a little bit about these uh, locations and we're gonna get started with uh, Manuel Antonio. As you see on the red uh, arrow in the map, uh, Manuel Antonio is located in the mid-Pacific side of the country. Uh, it's located quite close from San Jose. It's only uh, about a three and a half hours drive from San Jose. You can also fly into Manuel Antonio because there is an um, an airstrip. Uh, actually, it's you can call it an airport, um, not like the regional airports that you have in the US or Canada, but uh, for our standards, that could be considered an, um, a little airport. Uh, the flight from San Jose takes uh, approximately 25 minutes, and uh, this uh, local airstrip or airport connects the area by, land, by air with other destinations. You can easily fly from uh, Liberia, for example, um, which is here, um, to, to uh, Kepos, and it takes about uh, maybe an hour, 50 minutes flight. You can also connect uh, if you want to fly to Arenal around here or to any of all the other destinations like um, Tortuguero or like uh, Nosara, which is um, around here, sorry, or um, Santa Teresa, which is around here. So it's, it's a quite easy spot to access via flight as well. Um, well, Manuel Antonio and Kepos, and I will tell, explain you the difference between those right now, is uh, located at the Punta Arenas province. That's the sixth province of Costa Rica. Do you see my 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 mouse moving around in the map? Yeah, we can see your mouse moving. Okay, perfect. Um, then um, Punta Arenas, it's the province that covers most of the mid and south pacific of the country around here and funny thing is that this piece of the peninsula of the nicoya peninsula also belongs to punta arenas even though it's attached by land to guanacaste which is this other province that we um already uh talked about in a previous webinar um well also another intel tip is that this um the local governments in this part of the province are trying to actually um, unite with Guanacaste because it has more sense than to, one, to Punta Arenas, which is in this end. Well, that's a little bit of the politics intel of the country happening right now. <laughs> um, so the driving distance from San Jose, like I mentioned, is approximately three hours and a half. You have a very, very good road because there is um, highway number 27 that is gonna take you out of San Jose and drop you here to the uh, coastline. And then on the coastline, you're going to go through uh, different towns and um, until you reach Kepos. Kepos is actually the name of the county. Kepos is only... Uh, 222.86 square kilometers, and they have a population of uh, 19,889 inhabitants. And Manuel Antonio, it's the district that uh, it's part of, of the Kepos County. And in Manuel Antonio is where you find the Manuel Antonio National Park that we are going to talk a little bit about. Manuel Antonio National Park was um, established back in November 15, 1972. That's why um, you, um, that's the reason why I mentioned at the beginning that this could be a little old because this is actually one of the, the first national parks that we had in the country. It's interesting because it's the smallest one, but it's the one that receives more visitors on the, um, throughout the year. So the opening hours of Manuel Antonio National Park are from 7 a.m. to 4 p.m. And something important, very important, is that the park is closed on Mondays. They, uh, the park rangers and some scientists made a, um, a study on the park and it, because of all the amount of people that was um, coming to this park, they um, kind of, they needed to give it a rest at least one day of the week. So they decided to close on Mondays. This information is important because when you have people in Manuel Antonio, um, you should, uh, and if they are there on a Monday, they won't be able to access the national park. So we would have to think about all their activities, which are 
plenty to choose from, but it's always important to take that into account. The admission fee is only $16 per person and children under 12 are um, have a free admission. Um, so if your clients are staying at, at a local hotel and they want to go on their own, they can do it just paying the admission. Of course, we always recommend to go there with a guide because it's completely different. You will get a completely different experience thanks to the um, very experienced uh, eyes of a guide who will point out uh, natural history um, uh, and also different animals and birds and plants uh, that live in the park and uh, you will understand better all the uh, ecology of the park if you have um, a guide with you. Um, there are some restrictions in terms of what you can enter on the park. So you can have sodas and waters, um, that's permitted. And any non-alcoholic drink is also permitted to um, have into the park. You may not drink alcoholic um, uh, beverages uh, into the park. And you can have some snacks uh, ready uh, to open uh, like sandwiches or some fruit or whatever. But this is um, very important to keep your belongings uh, on the watch because of all those little guys that you see in the picture, those are the white faced monkeys and they are on the top of the trees just waiting for you to leave something behind so they can go and pick it up and play with it. Um, so I've seen a lot of cameras go away, a lot of cell phones go away, a lot of bags with goodies go away as well. And you know, it's almost impossible to recover those. So you need to watch out. Uh, there are also raccoons who are also friends of of those left behind things, and they will they are happy to take them with them. So you need to to just be aware when you are enjoying the beach or the ocean. Um, the guide is going to be there, of course, taking care of your stuff, but um, you need to be extra careful there. The distance from San Jose to the park it's uh, only 165 kilometers. That's why it's so so quick to get there. And uh, well, the dry season goes from December through April, which is what happens in almost the entire country. The size of the park is only 1,950 hectares of land, but 55,000 marine hectares. So this park, even though it's very small in in the um, in the land part that protects is extremely big in the marine part. So not only you will have the chance to have a combination of beach and rainforest on the on the land part of the park, but also if you take if you go out on a boat uh, tour, you can experience that protected ocean as well. And over there you're gonna get to see rays, you're gonna get to see fish um, like tarpoon fish, for example, or big uh, sailfish, and also um, tuna, and also rays. And if there's um, a season, and if you're lucky enough, you will be able to see uh, whales as well. Uh, the, the National Park has different um, trails, which are very um, interesting, because they take you to different points or vantage points from at the park. And something also important to mention about the trails is that they have in one international all access um, trail, which has access to a wheelchair. So if you have a client that does uh, have to use a wheelchair, this trail is going to, going to take the client through the rainforest and it's going to end up at a beach. So um, it, that's also something important. And also if you have um, people that have any kind of problem uh, in terms of movement, this trail is going to be very easy for them. So that's something important to mention about the park. But well, let's talk a little bit about the curated hotels in the Manuel Antonio area. Before we get there, something important to mention as well is that most of these hotels are located in the top of the hills that surround the beach and the national park. Why? Because by law, we cannot build anything in the national parks. So this land is protected and there's no construction over there. And then next to the park, which has four or five different beaches that you can visit, there's a long, very long public beach that uh, every, anybody can use. But that public beach is also protected uh, in terms of uh, construction. So most of these hotels that we are going to see are basically located in the top of the hill with amazing ocean views and some of them do have access to a small 
I can say private beaches because there are no private beaches in Costa Rica, but small beaches that have access only going through the hotel. Um, meaning that if a local wants to go into that beach, the hotel by law is obliged to allow this person to go through the hotel to reach the beach. Or if there is people coming to the beach on a boat, the, the hotel cannot um, kick them out of it. Um, but those uh, hotels like Arenas del Mar, for example, that they have access to this uh, little private beach, again, uh, I cannot say private, but it's the feeling. They do have the advantage of having access to that particular uh, part of the beach. And we're going to see two of them. First, I want to introduce you to Arenas del Mar. Arenas del Mar has 37 luxury suites and guest rooms. They have different styles of rooms and different uh, categories. Like you see, there are buildings that are uh, three-story tall, and there, there are different buildings located in the rainforest and surrounded by nature. So you have the... Uh, um, the garden superior and the um, ocean, I mean, in the, well, the garden superiors are the ones located in the, in the first floor. And then you have Ocean View Premium Suites on Ocean View Suites located in the upper fl uh, floors. There is a new, um, a new room category that they just uh, built recently, which is the Playitas Suite, which is located in that near or in front of that beach that I was mentioning to you that is called Playitas Beach. And that suite allows up to uh, five people with uh, a very large um, living room space that has also day beds. Um, this hotel has the advantage of having beautiful views, not only of the beach, but also of the national park. Because if you um, um, set up on that pool that you're looking on the picture and you see to your uh, left you're going to see the national park and if you see uh, in front of you or to your right you're going to see the public beach and the ocean. Uh, the property has uh, access to two beaches one of them is the public beach on uh, Manuel Antonio and the other one is this Playitas beach that I mentioned to you. It has two pool areas this one is on the top of the hotel and there's another one on by the beach and two restaurants, one over here and one by the beach, and Las Brisas Wellness Center, which is located in this floor. Actually, if you walk uh, to your right, you're gonna see a little walkway, a few stairs down, and there you will see the, um, you will find the wellness center. This is one of my favorite hotels, actually. It belongs to the Cayuga Collection, which is a, a brand that does very high-end uh, boutique style uh, eco-oriented hotels. They manage a few of those in the country. And this is one of the of the best properties that they manage. We also have Sicomono. Sicomono, it's uh, it's very dear to my heart. It's actually a hotel that started uh, with only that uh, building section that you see there. And they uh, built a couple of other sections and they purchase a hotel next door and, and it got integrated into Sicomono. They have 58 rooms. Um, they are basically uh, facing the ocean. Like you see, they are on the top of a hill. If you, uh, if you would see, be seen from those uh, balconies to the front, you will see the ocean and also down, down the hill. Uh, they have different room categories like Superior, Deluxe, Deluxe Plus, and the Honeymoon Suites that are huge, by the way. Um, also two pool areas. Um, they have Claro Que Si um, Seafood Grill, which is one of the restaurants, and Rico Tico Jungle Grill, which is the restaurant where they serve breakfast and more fast foody things. They also have the Cala Spa. And something that I have to mention about the Sicomono is Regalame Gallery, which is literally gift me um, gallery. And in this gallery, you will find amazing art from locals in not only on paintings, but also you will find uh, little statues and also clothing. Everything it's made by locals, and it's um, it's beautiful. You will find also some of the finest uh, uh, pieces of of leather work um, there. So it's something important to mention uh, because whenever you go to Sicomono, you have to go to the to the gift shop, gift boutique, and you will find unique things to to take home with you. Another property that we like to use a lot in Manuel Antonio is Macanda. Macanda by the sea. This is important to mention that this is an adults only resort. The uh, hotel was 
built originally back in 1985 by designer George, Joe uh, Nichols, and they started with 11 villas. Then in 2017, they added 16 more uh, rooms. They have two pool areas, um, two restaurants, and also a spa. This hotel is fantastic for um, for uh, couples looking into a very romantic and quiet escape. It's also um, uh, used by the LGBT community. So if you have clients looking into a more private um, uh, getaway, um, this is a perfect place uh, to go. I have to mention as well that Manuel Antonio has uh, always been uh, very LGBT friendly. So if you have clients on that market, this is a fantastic place to, to, um, to present to them. Um, the rooms are amazing. They, the the core is very, very, I would say, um, very glamorous. They did a lot of like beautiful marble, beautiful fur for the for the um, for the rocks. Uh, um, amazing huge canopy beds. Uh, it's very luxurious. Um, so it's it's uh, something quite unique. And like you see, they only have 27 rooms, which is amazing. Fantastic size um, to have a very good operation on be on top of everything. And now that we are looking into this new era in travel and people is looking into more secluded, unique, small places, this is a fantastic option to think about. And I'd like to finish the, our top four hotels in um, uh, Manuel Antonio um, with Los Altos. Los Altos, it's quite interesting. It's, it's a very different concept. As you see on the middle of the picture on the top side, you see these uh, buildings. The property was um, actually uh, thought originally to be an apartment store, uh, an, an apartment complex. Um, but then we got uh, the um, crisis in the U.S. Uh, with the with the uh, selling and buying of properties, and that hit us as well. And then they decided to turn it into a hotel. So what they offer are three uh, room, I mean, three room apartments. Uh, they have a huge living room space and a main master bedroom with a king size bed and then two other bedrooms, one with a queen size bed and another, and another one with uh, twin beds. Um, they have rainforest suites on the main floor, on the on the second floor, actually, the main floor, um, you will find there the, the gym, a little meeting space, the reception area, the cafeteria, is and then on the second floor you will have the rainforest suites that basically face more the rainforest then you have the um the three three top ocean um views which are second and third floor and then you have panoramic views and each building has two penthouses which have an additional bedroom so instead of three they have four bedrooms and also uh, on the rooftop they have access to a, um, a jacuzzi this place is perfect for families because you can use the three rooms you can rent the three rooms or two or just one but one i would say it's kind of a waste but if you have families um you could have i don't know uh the husband and the wife and the main um uh, and the master then you have two kids uh maybe in in the room with the twin beds and maybe i don't know the grandparents or a friend of the family or or whatever in the in the room that has a queen size bed uh, they do have a pool area as well and uh, Carola's restaurant, which is amazing. And they also have a Thai restaurant and a sushi restaurant kind of outside of the property, but they belong to the property as well. So you have different options. The Carola's restaurant, it's next door to the infinity pool, which is fantastic with beautiful views of the ocean. They have also a very interesting set of trails on the property and they do have access to uh, one of those little private beaches that I mentioned to you before. So from the four hotels that we have presented to you in Manuel Antonio, two of them, do have access to a private beach, let's say, on the property. Uh, they also have a beautiful uh, spa and wellness center, which is uh, great. But this property is fantastic for families. I really recommend it. 
Talking about a little bit of what to do in Manuel Antonio, uh, of course, you cannot miss a visit to the National Park, to the Manuel Antonio National Park. Um, we do offer the, uh, those visits with a private drive with a private guide so uh, they're gonna go to uh, it's gonna be a small group so that's always uh, beautiful because you enjoy a lot more and you experience a lot more from the uh, experience of the guide and uh, also um, we try to use the beaches because there are four different beaches in the park that are less crowded of course and we try to do the hikes at different times so we can avoid the crowds we don't want to make this uh we want to make this experience as um unique as possible and that that management of, of the times when we operate the tours allow us to do that. There are very good fishing tours. There is a marina, full marina in um, Kepos, in, in the, when Kepos is located 10 minutes drive from Manuel Antonio National Park maybe. Um, and from there we can do inshore or we can do offshore fishing. Uh, there are different boats from different sizes um, starting uh, boats for with capacity for two people all the way to uh, eight people um, there is also a location that is about an hour away from Manuel Antonio which is Santa Juana and they call it the rainmaker this is the heart of the rainforest in that area it's a private reserve and uh, it's actually the the place where some of, of the rivers that run through the ocean kind of come through. So you will find different uh, waterfalls and different uh, hiking uh, trails. And they also put together a, a beautiful small rural cabin uh, that can be used also as an accommodation. But the idea is to show visitors how uh, the rural communities in that part of the coast used to live. Um, there are also fun catamaran adventure tours that can be um, uh, chartered privately for a family or a little group or you can join other people going on the catamarans there are um, about five different sizes um, so it really depends on on how much uh, people you would like to have with you and the fun thing about the catamaran adventures is that you will experience the national park from the ocean side so you have beautiful views uh, from the ocean to the national park and you will go on that um, sea protected sea uh, that the ocean protects um, with the possibilities of um, watching dolphins, turtles, um, rays, etc. And like I mentioned before, if it's the season, uh, also humpback whales. There are also two very good rivers to do uh, uh, rafting. You have the Sabegre River and the Naranjo River. And uh, the ocean kayaking and snorkeling tours are also um, activities that could be arranged privately. Um, and that will um, show you a different point of view of Manuel Antonio. So that's a little bit what I wanted to share with you about Manuel Antonio. Let's go a little bit further south to this area which is uh, actually called, um, uh, it's the Osa, the Osa County. So if you go here on the map, you see that we were here in Quepos Manuel Antonio. You have to go a little further south, about an hour and a half driving, and you will be at the um, Dominical um, and Uvita areas, which are located around this, and they are part of the Osa County, which is 160.76 square kilometers and, on, and has a population only of 3,306 uh, inhabitants who live mostly in towns in this part of the, um, of the province, still part of the Punta Arenas province, of course. Um, to get here from San Jose, the driving time will be about four hours and a half. Um, an hour and a little bit more from Manuel Antonio and from Kepos. And we also use the airstrip or the airport in Kepos and then drive one hour and a half to get here. Um, so that allows you to connect from this part of the country to any other part by private charter or regular scheduled flight using Kepos as the gateway. Um, this part of, of the country is kind of an up and coming destination. It's it's I would dare to say what Manuel Antonio used to look uh, 10, 20 years ago. Um, there are a couple of small little towns in, in um, Dominical and in Uvita, and you have the um, Bahia Ballena um, National Park. 
talking about Bahia Ballena National Park, um, you see this picture, you see that it looks like, like the tail of a whale. That's, that's quite funny because this is part of the Dominical uh, beach area in Uvita beach areas, and the National Park protects all this part of land that you see in the back. But the fun thing is that it actually looks like a whale. And the fun thing here is that you get to see whales um, during their migrational uh, period. Um, it, the season is supposed to start at mid-July uh, mid and go all the way to uh, November. But we have a festival, the whale festival there, that happens in the month of September, which is when um, the possibilities of looking at whales is, is um, bigger. Um, the National Park protects 13,000 acres of land and nine miles of coastline. Uh, the park was named after the humpback whales, Marino Ballena. Ballena means whale in, in Spanish, that migrate in this region um, from August to November, like I mentioned. Um, then uh, the area was declared as National Park back in 1989 and basically protect the migration of and, and the breeding and feeding of these um, animals. Um, then uh, the, the park spans 110 hectares of land and uh, 5,375 hectares of sea. So again, these national parks and by the, by the ocean not only protect uh, land, but also ocean, which is extremely important. And uh, there are a lot of different species of birds and animals that you could see here added on to the different um, marine species that you could find in, in the ocean over here. Let's talk a little bit about the curated hotels in Bahia Ballena. I want to introduce you to a few, starting with the Cura Design Villas. Cura is actually part of the Cayuga collection as well, like Arenas del Mar in Manuel Antonio. This is an adults-only resort, and they only have eight private suites. This is very boutique, very secluded in the top of the hill. Um, again, like in Manuel Antonio, most of the hotels in this part of the country are uh, built in the top of the hills, and they have um, ocean view. This is important to mention because some of these hills are quite steepy and if it rains a lot, it gets very muddy. So most of these hotels do offer the facility of a parking uh, in the in below and then they use um, cars from the property to go to take you up to to the um, to their hotel. Um, Kura, uh, they have this amazing infinity saltwater pool. Um, the master suites are um, 1,500 square feet, which is huge, and they have um, beautiful mountain view and plunge pool as well. And the infinity suites are a little smaller, 740 square feet, and they are um, at canopy level and have impressive view to the um, to the to the rainforest. Um, they have um, well, there's a uh, pool operating restaurant and the specialty there is of course of course seafood and fresh fish and they have the uh, beautiful um, shaspa which does have integrated some of the boruca um, um, indian uh, community that lives nearby some of their philosophy on it so it's it's very interesting and uh, one thing that i think i mentioned at the beginning kura is an adult only resort as well then we go to Elan. Elan by the beach is actually a gated community of um, apartments, like similar to what we saw in Manuel Antonio at, um, at Los Altos. Elan has um, different uh, level. They have like four story buildings. And also they have another section that is higher on the top of the hills that have uh, private houses. But Elan it's, um, has the, the um, the interesting characteristic of having direct access to the ocean. This is actually one of the of the few hotels in the area that do have access to the ocean uh, by a private um, walkway that is going to take you to the Vagena Beach, which is the beach that we saw on that uh, tail uh, whale tail that I that I show you on the previous picture. Um, they have three bedroom luxury residences with rainforest and garden views. Um, 
two bedrooms with rainforest view and three bedrooms with ocean views. Uh, and the three bedrooms attached villas that also include a private plunge pool like the one that you see there. They have a huge um, private beach club that does have access to the to the beach, and they do have there um, a little, let's say, restaurant bar service. The property doesn't have a, a full restaurant on it, but um, they are fully equipped. Uh, the kitchens are fully equipped, so um, we can help you out. Uh, by doing uh, grocery shopping and having somebody cooking for your clients at the at the apartment if they like to, uh, for either the three meals or maybe just one meal a day. And um, there are also a lot of different, very good restaurants in the area, little restaurants in the area that uh, we can arrange with the concierge of the property to have reservations on um, and also transportation if your clients don't have a car rental or something. On another uh, top of the hill, um, we have Rancho Pacifico, which is also an adults only property. They have villas with one, two or three bedrooms. Basically, they have two um, houses with three bedrooms, two suites with two uh, bedrooms, and also a full spa and full operating restaurant. This picture uh, doesn't really make justice to, to the property because I would love to show you a 360 picture because this hotel is located on the top of a hill and you are able to see the entire ocean and rainforest from there. Um, it's a beautiful little hotel, um, great for, uh, again, for escapes, romantic escapes uh, as an adult only resort. And they do have also um, service to take you to the beach and to take you to the restaurants nearby, uh, even though they do have a little restaurant operating. And I want to uh, finish my presentation on the hotels in that area, giving you uh, what is going to be one of those amazing and unique properties in Costa Rica. Let me introduce you to the Art Villas. The Art Villas are in the process of uh, completing the bungalows, uh, are going to be finished by the end of July. And this is one of going to be one of the most unique, uh, very specially designed options in Costa Rica. As you see, they are in the top of the mountain. The building that you have here on the top is the main villa that has four bedrooms. And then you have the Cocos units that are these ones located around here that are basically um, an amazing uh, high-end tent. I would say some kind of, a, of glamping if you like to. Uh, you see there is a little um, uh, waterway here that goes down to a pool area that is located around here and then the final part of the of the um, of the um, property is going to be the atelier villa around here that has two bedrooms and over here you have a deck that is going to be used as a living space and also as a yoga deck and for activities the property is fully equipped they don't have a restaurant at the moment they plan to do it later on depending on, on accommodation but again these places are fully equipped we can have a chef cooking three meals a day or one meal a day depending on the client needs uh, we will definitely have uh, access to do uh, grocery shopping so we will make sure to have uh, all the the kitchens fully uh, stocked with all the goodies that your clients like to enjoy. And the property does have access as well with, um, with um, concierge service to booking uh, dinners and transportation to uh, the beach uh, from the hotel. But this is something really new. I mean, uh, only um, few people already know about the existence of this property. The owner of our company is visiting them over next week. So we will have a... Uh, uh, someone from the company experiencing it, but I didn't want to miss the opportunity to present it to you because you have to watch out for the Arvelas in uh, Uvita. Um, well, because this place has, it's going to be in the talk of a lot of people in the near future. Talking about experiences in the Bahia Ballena, well, definitely the well-watching tours are, are on the top. Um, we need to watch out only for the seasonabil seasonability of those because that, uh, happens between mid-July uh, to the end of November. We have the Nauyaka Waterfalls Hike, which is an amazing uh, waterfall, and you access them through a series of very 
um, different levels of trails. Um, Marina Ballena National Park visit, you cannot miss a visit to the National Park. Stand up paddles, um, paddle board and snorkeling is fantastic in this area. And like I mentioned to you, the Boruca Indigenous Reserve is nearby, so we have a full um, cultural immersion into their uh, lifestyle. And the Rancho La Merced uh, National Wildlife Refuge Horseback Adventure, this is a private um, national, uh, well, private. Uh, biological reserve or wildlife refuge that you can uh, visit and you will have different trails to do horseback riding as well. Um, there are many things to do, but we would like to point out, we wanted to point out these that are kind of the top things to do, but we definitely have different options for your clients. And with that, I think I'm ready with the, um, with the webinar for today. Um, open up to um, discussion and to questions. Jenna, do we have any question? Perfect. Yes, Henry, we have a lot of questions coming through on that one. Um, thank you. Thank you so much for such a great webinar. Um, if anybody has additional questions, you can feel free to type them through now. Um, we are getting quite a few, so I'll get Henry to answer as many as possible. Don't want to take up too much of your time today, but um, I'll start um, from the beginning and we'll see how much we can get through. Okay, let's let's go. Hit me. Perfect. All right. So the first question is: uh, Can you hire private guides for the Manuel Antonio National Park, or do you recommend one to use for that? I do, and yes, we can arrange it for your clients. Okay, perfect. Um, regarding the Arenas del Mar, is there fencing separating the hotel from the public beach, or what is the hotel security if there is not a fence there? There is not a fence and they do have security on the beach, but again, that beach is basically used 99% by the hotel guests because uh, for people, for, for locals or people who's not staying at the hotel, it's very complicated to go through it. If you're walking, you have to wait for the tide um, to go down so you could jump, you could go over some uh, rocks to come down to the beach. And uh, uh, People doesn't really um, usually ask for permission for the hotel to go through the hotel to go into the beach. And those people coming in on a boat, uh, that doesn't happen often either. So I would dare to say that 99% of, of the people who use that beach are um, guests of the hotel. Okay, great. Um, in regards to Manuel Antonio area, is that a good area for fishing? It is, actually. We Oh, um, seem to have lost you. 